so today we're going to be making a uh, gaming tabletop. Um, if you're anything like us, um, you play a lot of games, and uh, you know, some of the games that you get into have quite a large footprint. So um, you'll see a little bit below me, we have our coffee table, um, which is um, probably roughly a little under 30 inches by about 4 feet, and, um, and we tend to use the whole thing. So um, today we're going to make a, um, like you said, a, a um, tabletop to kind of go over the table. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, there's a couple of videos out that show you kind of this process. Um, I'm actually going to be making a, uh, a double-sided um, tabletop. So um, to get started, I'll show you kind of what we're going to be using. Um, I bought two, actually, kind of contrasting grays. Um, the reason why I did this is because I want to be able to flip it over, um, depending on the game we're playing and the pieces and things like that. Um, if it's a higher key game, then we might want to use the darker. Um, if it's you know a darker game, we'll want to use the lighter one. So, um, so we got some of that. Um, we have a quilt batting. Um, this one only cost me about I think like twelve dollars. Um, the reason why we're going to use the batting is just to give um, the the tabletop uh, kind of some cushion, so it's not you know so hard. Um, you know our games get pretty intense. So. Um, and then finally, some kind of adhesive. So um, you can use staples and things like that. Um, I may or may not. I haven't really decided yet. Um, but I did get some Loctite spray adhesive. Uh, this stuff's really great. Make sure that you get um, the kind of the medium grade one. There's a kind of the low grade adhesive. Uh, will allow you to reposition things, which is great. Uh, but for this, we really want everything to be, uh, you know, nice and tight. So use this. And then I've got some uh, glue sticks. If you don't want a glue gun, you should get one. It's great for everything. So um, with that. Very last, um, out of frame, um, I actually have the, the large size uh, tabletop that we're going to be using. Um, but what I decided to go with was um, kind of an MDF board. So you can use plywood, you can use sheathing. Um, both of those tend to be a bit rougher, um, also a little bit more expensive. So um, what we're going to be using is um, this eighth inch uh, MDF. Um, it's very, very smooth, which is perfect for this kind of thing. Um, and we're going to be actually sandwiching them together, so it uh, should be pretty fun, should be pretty easy, and um, hope that you enjoy. So here we go. All right, so we're back. Um, so I have um, the batting set up here, and you'll see that this is the um, MDF that we're going to use. So um, your first step in this project is going to be to, to kind of figure out how big of a table you want to make. Um, you can use my design completely, um, but you might want to... Um, you know, take a look at what table you're going to be playing on or tables and uh, determine what kind of size you want. So, um, I opted to do three feet by four feet, exactly, um, just because that was a little bit easier for me. Um, and it covers our table beautifully. So, um, because of the dimensions of the MDF that I got and ultimately the table that I'm making, um, I ended up getting the, um, the batting in, um, it's an 81 by 96 inch. Um, which I think is a maybe like a twin or something like that. Um, but be really careful when you're looking at the batting. You don't want to um, you don't want to have pieces kind of put together. You definitely want to have one you know giant stream of batting. So uh, for this one here, um, if I unfold all of this, you'll see that this end here is actually the 81 inch end. Um, and for my purposes, I'm using that 81 inch in 81 inch end for um, this kind of three foot section and then I'm going to be using the longer end for the longer end of my board and I have to be very careful about this um, just because I bought just enough so <laughs> I have to live on the edge a little bit so I'm going to get this cut and um, show you guys uh, how that's going to go on. Alright, just clean that up a little bit. Alright, so um, We've got, I actually went ahead and cut two of these because we're going to need one for the other side. So everything I'm doing, we're going to do twice because ultimately we're going to be sandwiching these two guys together. So I'm just going to fold that up and put that out of the way for now. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to want to do, like I said, again, um, this is going to be right side up. So this is kind of a smooth side of the MDF. Put that up. Um, another reason why I like, you know, using this is that um, it requires no sanding, no priming, Nothing. So um, you get a nice smooth um, tabletop and you don't really have to do a ton of work. So 
That's always good. All right, so uh, if again, um, with the batting, this particular one, it's the polyester, it's really stretchy. Um, so um, during this next step, we're gonna be um, adhering the batting to the MDF board. And what you wanna make sure of is that you don't have any of these kind of ripples or wrinkles. Um, so it's very, very forgiving. Um, if you, you know, do pull um, and stretch around, then you will get a nice tight um, kind of seal. So just make sure that that's, you know, happening. Um, but, all right, so let's get um, a spray and let's get going. So I'm spraying this time on half of it first. Um, if you can open a window, do it. Or if you can do it outside, do that. Um, I live in an apartment right now, so <laughs> can't really do that. Um, but again, you're just gonna you're gonna smooth this all the way across the table. Um, and like I said, it works best if you do um, you know do half of it first. You don't have to spray the entire thing because um, then it gets a little tricky to kind of try to smooth it out. You're trying to do it all at the same time, so, um, so that's going to go around there like that. Um, we'll pull this back a little bit, and you can see it's already kind of stuck, so this is good stuff. You don't need a ton. You will see that I'm just kind of I'm trying to stretch it. You want to make sure that you have enough of an overhang. Um, the felt's going to go on top of this, so really your primary concern with this is going to be making sure that you don't have any bumps. So, and we look pretty darn good. Okay, We're done. Okay, next up is going to be felt. All right, so. Um, we're going to do sort of the same thing with the felt. Um, again, with the felt, you want to make sure that you don't have a ton of, um, you know, folds and creases and stuff like that. If you're anything like me, I'm a little picky about things like that. Um, especially when we're playing games, so. Um, you're going to lay your felt out. Now, sometimes um, felt also has a right and a wrong side. Um, I, you know, it really it's a matter of preference. Um, we like the nice smooth side, sort of like the side that you'd see on like a uh, pool table or something like that. So there is kind of more rough side. Um, also depending on the blend of felt that you get, and a lot of people, I don't know if people know this or not, but um, will will matter. Um, so this is just uh, almost like a synthetic kind of uh, felt. It was five ninety nine a yard or something. Um, you can get uh, wool that's felted, and that's what we would consider real felt. Um, it's going to be much more expensive, um, but uh, really for purposes of, like, for what you're doing here, it's really not going to make that much of a difference in my opinion. Um, so for the money, I figure, you know, this is probably going to be fine. So um, I'm going to stretch this out and um, we're going to cut this to size as well. So same thing. I actually, I bought a little bit more of this because it was, it was the end of the bolt and if you shop at fabric stores a lot, they will give you the rest of it usually like for free or at a discount. So I went ahead and got way more than I needed, but you know, that's quite fine. So we're just going to stretch this out. I'm going to give myself again enough of an overhang so that I can um, fold it underneath, which is what we're going to be doing. by in lengths of 48 inches, so uh, 44 or 48 depends um, on what you're buying, but with something like this, I think this was like a 54 inch bolt, so again, you just want to 
remember your dimensions and stuff. Um, you know, make sure that you're buying enough and not only that you're buying enough, but that you're not going to have seams and stuff like that. So, um, I'll put the dimensions of everything that I bought, you know, so in case you want to do exactly what I'm doing, you can have that problem. Um, okay, so I'm going to get this, um, I'm going to get this cut up and uh, then we'll move on. All right, so again, no real, um, no real rhyme or reason to the cutting, just make sure that it fits. Um, with all of this extra is going to be sandwiched between these boards anyway, so there's really no, um, you don't have a ton sitting there, but, um, you know, just make sure you have enough that it'll adhere underneath when we're ready for that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut um, the other dark gray one exactly to this size um, so that we can assemble that board as well. And then we'll, uh, I'm going to move on. Um, I'm probably also going to um, go ahead and, because I'm a little bit persnickety, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably steam or iron these just creases out because I don't really want, even though we're going to pull it really tight, I really don't want there to be any creases at all. So um, I'm going to get the other one cut, uh, iron these guys out, and then we'll be back. All right, so we're all cut, um, and I um, I did steam the felts because, like I said, I, I don't want there to be too many wrinkles. Um, there's still a few, but at the very least, maybe it will be a little less or a little more forgiving, rather. Um, so you'll see that it kind of fits um, over top with some overhang. So we're just going to do the exact same thing on this side that we did to the other um, when we were doing the batting. So I'm going to stretch this out here, um, make sure I have enough of an overhang on either side, which I have more than enough. Um, I'm going to bend this back about halfway, spray it up with some more of this adhesive. Okay. Now, very carefully, lay it down here. Kind of flattening as I go to start from the inside and push out. Um, it's usually the best way to do that. And you'll see if you can see some of these little wrinkles there. Um, you know the fabric's very forgiving as I start to push it out towards the sides like that. And we'll do the same thing here. So just really kind of spreading it out. Make it nice and nice and flat. Um, if you do use the polyester batting, um, it's more fluffy, if that makes sense, than like maybe a cotton or something would be. Um, so, I mean, just kind of smush it out as best you can. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to make sure that this part, yep, we're already sticking down there, so that's great. Um, we're not going to adhere to the underneath just yet. Um, that's going to be the next thing that we're going to do. Um, but once you do that, you'll see that you do still have a little bit of pull um, to make that really tight. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the other side now. Just the same thing. So I'm going to lay it very gently like that and just start pushing from the center and from those areas that are already stuck, just pushing out this. Really getting it nice and glued down. Working out any of those remaining wrinkles and things like that, so. Okay. okay, here we go. I feel ready to play already.
Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing um, on the other board. So um, I'm going to get the other board up here. I'm actually just going to put it right on top of this one. You don't have to. Um, and then we're going to put the batting and then the felt. get that ready to go. All right, so we're back. Um, what we're going to do now is actually assemble the table itself. So we've made um, two tabletops, essentially, pretty much, um, and we're going to be sandwiching them together. Um, but first, we're going to um, really stretch this outside fabric towards the inside. So um, this is critical. Um, what you're going to start to do um, is pull this extra fabric that you have, kind of that overhang, up towards the middle, like this, and we're going to start to adhere that. So um, I'm going to do a few different things, uh, just depending on how things are sticking. I'm going to start with Loctite, um, and I'm just going to work my way around um, little by little. I am not going to do anything with the corners right now, um, so I'm just going to fold up the sides. I'm going to pull it as tight as I possibly can down here. Um, I have my glue gun on standby in case we need that, um, but we may not, so we'll see. This is all going to be, again, sandwiched together ultimately. So really right now we're just trying to get a nice tight pull on the fabric. Um, and, you know, sticking, adhering something like felt to something like MDF, which is really soft and um, you know, then it's really not that hard, so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but you do want to make sure it's pulled nice and tight. So if you see, there's, you know, it's already kind of adhering. Um, don't, like I said, don't worry about your corners yet. I'll show you what we're going to do with those in a minute. Um, so I'm going to work my way around uh, this here and to do just that. Um, something else I'll mention, I did, I did end up cutting my batting um, just about um, to the size of um, the board itself. The reason why I did that is because I didn't want, you know, this is going to be a sandwich. Um, so we're going to have um, the other board laying on top of this one. We don't want um, this to be too thick because it will give us too much of a variance in, um, you know, the, the width of different 
pieces that we're working with. So we're trying to get, keep this as flat as possible, um, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm going to talk about the corners in a second. Right now, this looks funky, but I'll explain it in just a moment. two sides. Um, we really want to check underneath and make sure that we're, you know, pulling this nice and flat and it looks like we are. So um, that side's pretty darn stuck. Um, so I'm going to just pull this as I'm, you know, gluing it down just as tight as I possibly can. Um, with these corners here, you're going to want to leave them um, just unadhered is the best that I can describe it. Um, they're going to end up sticking up a little bit and that's okay. Um, because we don't want a lot of extra fabric there. So, okay, so we're just gonna pull as much as we can and really stick that down nice and tight. See, it looks looking really nice. Look at that there. Um, the other reason why I like putting felt on both sides is because it's going to give us some protection on the table, depending on where we're playing. We're usually here in the living room, but um, you never know. So um, we're going to pull this tight, tight, tight. Um, it might help to start in the middle. I don't know. This last end. Um, just really getting it as tight as possible. Okay, now at the corners here, um, and I'm not sure if you can see it or not on the video. Um, if not, I'll post some pictures afterwards. Um, but you'll see I've been kind of making these weird little, I don't know, Look like little hats or something. Um, all I've been doing is at the corners of the um, of the board. Um, instead of instead of putting this all the way down flat, I'm almost coming at a 45 degree angle. And what that's going to do is allow me to um, cut some of this off. Um, what I don't want to have happen is um, these are all really thin materials. But when you start bulking them up, they do uh, create a little bit of a variance. And we don't want that. So if I'm laying this down, or you know, if we're even if we're doing something like this, and then I put another one on top of it, we're going to have this sort of gap there. So we don't want that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, just trim these, kind of um, trim some of the excess, and then um, if I do have you know a little bit of uh, of a hem, that's fine. Uh, but it's not going to be as drastic. So um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to get the rest of this stuck down here. You could cut this extra too, but I'm just going to stick it inside of you. That. Okay. And, okay, so like I said, we're just going to go ahead and leave a little bit for an overhang. Um, but the most of this we can just lock right off. So I took about this much off from that corner, um, but you'll see it allows the corner to lay a lot nicer. So I'll take even a tiny bit more than that. Um, if you're not worried about there being, you know, big gaps in your project, then that's fine. Um, to worry about stuff like that, so we just have that nice and flat like that. Perfect. I uh, will do the other four as well.
So um, we're all glued down. Um, we have two, the two boards kind of ready to go. Um, I did do the corners and everything um, so that they won't um, kind of have too much thickness to them, I guess. Um, this is the exciting part. I'm so ready to do this. All right, so now we've got the two boards. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sandwich them together. So we're gonna put the wrong sides together. It goes without saying. Um, and uh, I've got my glue gun on ready. So if we do need to, uh, to use that. We will. And actually, I may do that anyway. I may just put like a strip of glue around the edge, um, in addition to the adhesive, just to make sure. So we don't like come apart. Um, if it does, it's not really the end of the world. Just glue back together. Uh, tighter, I guess, but I think that this will be, this is going to work out nicely. So this year, uh, a little bit more with this, and then I am going to do it, I have banded glue around here. Um, if you don't own a glue gun already, like I said, you should get one because they're great. This one actually plugs in and then you can disconnect it, it works for a little while, um, you know, even thereafter. I'm going to focus the glue kind of on these corners. Um, I have it on super hot so that it doesn't dry before I have time to put the corners on, put the, the other board on. But I'm going to be working quickly. So, um, and this is also something you can kind of like put the, you know, tip glue gun like in underneath and um, once we're done and if we need more adhesion to it, I'm going to adhere the crap out of this thing. Um, I'm going to spray a little bit more because I tried it with my hand and it's not like super sticky yet. Okay. And, and I'm going to line up those corners as best I can um, and then we'll readjust here. And again, I'm working like very quickly. So MDF isn't very, it's not extremely heavy. It is dense, obviously, hence the name. Um, so if you can't pick it up by yourself, don't try to um, get some help, but it shouldn't be that bad. Okay. And again, nothing's really permanent with this stuff, so you really put some pressure on it. Um, you have some time to work. So um, this is nicely lined up. Um, it's, I like how it looks. Um, I'm happy with it. All right, and you'll see we now have uh, a two-sided gaming table. So this side here and here, and uh, you can see how like neatly this kind of comes together here on all sides. So, I don't know, it works, it looks good, um, I'll get a game set up on here so you can kind of see what it's going to look like, um, you know, as a play table. So, um, sit tight while I clean up and uh, get everything out here, I'll meet you back here in a moment. All right, so I set up a, um, a game of Above and Below, with which, uh, you know, we played just the other day. Um, and you can see that this game has a huge footprint if you haven't played it, you have everything from um, you know, your player tableau, your player board, to um, an encounter book, which has to be in ready, readily available for everybody that's playing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you can see that we have more than enough space now to put everything up there. Um, and then I'll show you what the other side looks like. This is what it looks like with the light gray background, so, um, or tabletop, I should say. So depending on the game you're playing, you might prefer a higher key background. Um, Above and Below might be one of those games. It's a really pretty game. And, um, you know, it has some darker features and things, so we'll see how it goes. I know we're excited to get things up on this and, um, uh, you know, see kind of how it works out. I think it'll be great. Um, I'm really interested in putting uh, Fields of Arl up there because that has an enormous footprint. Um, it's a huge worker placement game. Um, but that's pretty much it. There you have it. All right, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, really, really simple project. Uh, good for beginning kind of DIY person or pretty much anybody. Um, just uh, be patient. Um, make sure that you get those. You know, make it make sure it's you know smooth as possible. 
um, and that's really going to help, you know, ultimately playing your games. So uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, be sure to check out Ant Lab Games. Um, Anthony and I play all the time, so he does a ton of uh, solo playthroughs, and we've been doing some um, two-player uh, playthroughs as well recently, hence the need for a much larger board. So um, I hope to see you again, and for now, goodbye.